Today's episode is finally the first of a big two-part story that will wrap up the current phase of Multiverse Tales and launch us into the next one. In it, I will be taking four subscriber-submitted deities and be drawing them as four of the Archon Demons, characters that I've referenced in the last few Multiverse Tales stories, but who will also be explained in the context of today's. Part two will be released one week from today, with a regular Popgrass Studios episode coming out on Friday, because it turned out doing these immediately back-to-back -back was going to be a bit much for me, but for now, I hope you all enjoy part one of Nothing to Fear, but Fear Herself. Let's go! Hit like, if you want, subscribe, if you feel like, but either way, enjoy the show. As a barrage of blaster fire in a rainbow of colors ripped past Mara's ears, she couldn't help but feel a strange rush, fighting off something other than demons for once. She was in a polished chrome city floating in the outer space of Dimension C-284, as opposed to her usual missions tracking down demonic beasts that haunted her world. The beings firing on her and her friends all wore matching black uniforms, but were of various alien species and carried a litany of different weapons. Out from the crowd of them guarding the main tower ahead came seven rockets, spiraling through the air around each other, curving through the sky to soar right towards Mara. She didn't break stride, just raising an arm and expanding her demon flesh to block the blows, but before they could make impact, a cluster of boulders shot above her. The rockets struck the stones and exploded in midair. Suddenly, a red-clad figure leapt over Mara's head, regathered the rocks onto her arm, then landed, running on forward, yelling back, Don't think I'm letting you have all the fun, Mara. Alexis Jones continued on, blocking the onslaught of fire that came her way with her rocks. Mara could have sprung on ahead easily, but knew that Alexis was always eager for a good fight. She wanted Alexis in as good of a mood as possible, because Mara anticipated that soon, she may have an opportunity to move forward with a plan of hers that she knew Alexis was not going to like, though it did still terrify her to be considering doing something against her friend's wishes. A monstrous shriek came from above and drew Mara's eyes. Astra, in her form as a steaming green dragon, had soared up towards the top of the tower, but was drawing massive fire from the surrounding roofs. As more and more shots came her way, she suddenly imploded into a cloud of steam, and through the mist, fell Astra in her human form towards the other fighters on the ground. She extended her arms briefly into wings again to slow before landing. Ah, all right, fine, so Benny and Sterling were right. An approach from above is a no-go. A group of melee-armed assailants ran towards Mara and Astra, but charging between them came Kate with a massive sword. She turned it sideways and smacked all three with the face of her blade, knocking all of them off their feet. You know, this would be a lot more fun if I could use this thing properly. An angry sneer instinctively came across Mara's face as Dresden marched up near the group. While normally I'd not be opposed to that method, Caitlin, you would largely be killing innocent beings. These people have all had their minds and bodies overtaken by the overseer of this universe to work as a function of her safety commission. That is also why we cannot take any of these foot soldiers to interrogate. The head of the commission would likely just psychically kill them to ensure they did not share any information with us. Benny Sharp, in a lime green mech armor, flew just above the group, carrying the symbiote-covered Skinner, tossing them forward to tackle into another set of approaching soldiers. Yeah, yeah, Captain Exposition McGenocide, we all know the plan already. Now you got any new and useful info for us, or you want to give us a hand with fighting these folks and whatnot? You do recall that I am on a rather tight leash in terms of what Ms. Jones will allow me to do, correct? Ah, uh, well, let me see what I can do about that. Hey, Rocky, Drezzy, he is real eager to do more to help out. Alexis had made it to the base of the tower, and Sterling had flown down next to her. They were back-to-back -back blocking and swinging at the soldiers. Alexis thrust out one arm towards Dresden. Fine with me. She clenched her fist, and suddenly Dresden flew forward, his magma-coated flesh being pulled by her mineral magnetism powers. He tackled through several soldiers on his way to her, then slammed into Alexis's forearm. Go tell her host that she's being rude to her guests. She lifted Dresden over her head, then opened her palm. Dresden shot up into the air and crashed through a window in the tower 20 floors up. Alexis called out, Mara, go with him and make sure Dresden doesn't do anything that'll make me want to grind him into dust. Mara nodded and her eyes lit up purple. She exploded forward like lightning, knocking enemies off their feet just by darting near them, then stopped at the base of the tower just before leaping up. She took a brief second to enjoy the image of her whole group of amazing friends fighting together. Or 
Most of them, anyway. Dr. Champagne and Heath Hurricane Reynolds were off in another world, helping a different group of heroes with something, so they couldn't make it. Mara then leapt up, aiming for the spot in the building Dresden had entered, but missing slightly and crashing through the window two floors below. She quickly sprung straight up, burst through the next two ceilings, and landed a few feet away from him as he brushed glass off his clothes. Nightmare Hunter, I suppose now would be an ideal opportunity for you to tear me to pieces than simply say I was slain by a member of the Safety Commission. Mara had wanted to see Dresden killed, though she'd been sure that Kate was going to do it until recently. Kate and Mara had made an agreement to work together to kill Dresden and his once ally, Fear herself, the Demon Queen whose actions had prompted them to come on this mission. She and Kate had kept it a secret as their team's leader, Alexis, was avidly opposed to killing. But the eventual, inevitable confrontation with Alexis over the fact that Mara did still plan to kill Fear had been churning in the back of Mara's mind for months. And it had only gotten worse after Kate had backed down from killing Dresden. Mara ignored what Dresden had said. Let's just get going. The sooner we grab this overseer, the sooner we figure out what Fear is up to. She leapt up and punched her way through a few dozen floors until they burst into the penthouse office, where Mara was immediately struck by an explosive green force. Though it did little more than shove her backwards ever so slightly. A few feet ahead of them, standing in front of a massive white desk in the pristine chrome room, was a pale-skinned human figure of about five and a half feet tall, who, despite her slicked hair and wrinkle-free black jacket, looked sort of like an elaborate cosplayer trying to pretend they were as confident as whatever character they were portraying. She held a lightsaber in one symbiote-covered clawed hand, and had a green lantern ring on another hand converted into metal by a biomech. St stay back she said in a surprisingly timid voice. Nobody crosses the safety commission and gets away with it! Mara glanced back at Dresden. This isn't the Overseer, is it? Astoundingly, yes. I have met her briefly once before, and if you look carefully, you can see the runes glowing through her suit on her collarbone. I'm serious, I'll use the force on you. I've got so many midichlorians in me, you don't even know. Mara sprang forward, and before the Overseer could make another move, Mara grabbed both her arms and raised her above her head. She kicked Mara in the stomach, but it barely felt like more than a tap. Y you're in for it now! Cthulhu totally owes me a favor, and I'll call him in here so fast! Dresden walked up next to Mara. Quiet your threats, Bertha. I'm well aware that your universe's Cthulhu is far less intimidating than the original. Mara turned her head. Her name is Bertha? She was a science fiction enthusiast from another universe who somehow acquired the Overseer abilities for this realm. She utilizes an army of mind-controlled minions to do her bidding because she is astoundingly weak for an Overseer. Uh, I'll show you astoundingly weak! Her green lantern ring lit up and a transparent anvil appeared above Mara's head. It slammed down onto her, but did absolutely nothing. Mara lowered the Overseer's arms to grab both in one of her hands, then tore the ring off her, plucked away the lightsaber, then pinned her to the wall. Mara tapped her watch with her chin, then said, Call Sharp Gang. All right, everyone, we've got the Overseer, heading back to A016. Bertha yelled out again, Hey, you can't do this to me! Don't you know who I am? Dresden stepped forward and leered at her. You are the pitiful excuse for a woman who is going to tell us everything you know about what Fear herself is planning, and what you've been allowing her to do in this universe. If you've done anything to assist her in granting physical forms to the entities known as the Archons, then know that you may have brought about the death of yourself and every other living being in the multiverse." Bertha's mouth clamped shut and her eyes widened. What? Uh, no, I, I definitely didn't help. What's an Archon? With their prisoner acquired, the team used a shard of the multiversal orb to transport back to their base of operations in Dimension A016. While Astra used that same shard to create a ring of purple energy to trap Bertha inside of, Mara pulled Kate aside. Kate, are you still gonna help me kill Fear? Kate promptly nodded. If that's what you want to do, then yeah. Mara scowled anxiously. 
What do you mean, if? Do you think I shouldn't now? You changed your mind about Dresden, so did you change your mind about this too? Kate scowled herself at the defensive response, but paused before replying. What's up with you? Are you okay? Mara crossed her arms. I just... The six months fear gave me are over now, so she could be forcing me to fight the Reaper any day. At this point, it could either be kill fear or I have to kill the Reaper, and I still think killing fear is the right thing to do, but... I don't know what Alexis and some of the others are going to say if I do. I don't... I don't want any of our friends to hate me, but I don't want to just wait around anymore until fear does something terrible. Kate nodded. I get it, and I do think you're right, but... I also think you're not giving Alexis and the others enough credit. If anything, this group is too forgiving sometimes. Alexis and I disagree plenty, but we're still friends. Besides, lots of this group probably knows that killing fear is a good call anyway. I think you should just tell Alexis. The idea shook Mara's whole body. Her mind immediately flashed back to her old group of friends in her world at the Predator Coalition of Demon Hunters, and to her ex, Clayton. As completely disinterested as she was in ever hanging out with him again, his reaction back when she'd gone against his wishes to do what she believed was right with her demon powers still made Mara's heart sink into her stomach. Before Mara could say anything more, Heath and Dr. Champagne came through the doors to join everyone, and moments later, the interrogation began, with the whole group circling around Bertha's glowing containment ring. Alexis spoke up first. What was Fear herself doing in your dimension? Dresden's told us that she's got some kind of deal with you, but we know that she lied to him about what it was. Don't make me ask twice, because none of us are in a patient mood. Bertha glanced around anxiously at the array of faces leering back at her. I don't have to tell you anything. What, you think I'm scared of you? Dresden spoke up next. Perhaps you are, and perhaps you are not, but you certainly should be afraid of Fear herself. If you have a deal with her, you should know that I have been her closest ally for 20 years now, and I just found evidence recently that she has been lying to me about her plans, going behind my back to do something truly despicable. So if you think she is above betraying you, I would think again. Yeah, well, she can't. We've got an overseer's bond. She'll die if she goes back on her word. Who told you that that is what happens when someone does not follow through on their end of an overseer's bond? Was it fear herself, by chance? Bertha glanced around as if looking for assurance. Is that... that's... It's, that's not what happens? No, it is not. She will be injured and acquire a permanent scar, but she will live, and I do not consider fear a vain enough person to care about a scar added to her already unsettling appearance. And she certainly would be willing to suffer through physical pain if it brought her closer to achieving a goal. Bertha's eyes darted to the ground and bounced back and forth. Her breathing quickened, but she didn't say anything in response. Finally, Mara couldn't hold back anymore and stepped in closer to the ring, trying to play good cop and appeal to Bertha's morality. Look, fear is really bad news. She's created hundreds, if not thousands, of demons in my world that have tortured and killed people for hundreds of years. Whatever you're helping her do, it's probably going to hurt a lot of people, but- Well, yeah, I mean, I obviously knew that, Bertha interrupted. I just, you know, I didn't think there was any chance she was going to hurt me. I don't care about other dimensions, I just want to keep mine safe. That place is like every awesome sci-fi franchise mashed together and I get to control it. Mara just barely heard Kayla lean over to Taryn nearby and say, I know this isn't the time, but can we consider taking her powers and making me the overseer of that dimension? And Mara was too focused to tell if Kayla was kidding, though she likely was. Bertha continued, I hate that other people are always trying to teleport into my dimension and mess things up, but I also don't want to keep it locked off all the time. I want to be able to go to other worlds. Fear agreed to make it so that I never have to worry about people from other dimensions teleporting into my world again. Astra suddenly burst out laughing. Oh, I, I'm sorry, but honey, please tell me that's not how you phrased your end of the deal when you made it. You have to be very specific when making an overseer's bond. She could just kill you now and you'd never worry about anything again. From Mara's understanding of overseer's bonds, she was pretty sure that wasn't accurate. But if it had been a bluff, it had been fairly convincing, so she didn't say anything. All the blood drained out of Bertha's face. But before she could say more, Alexis stepped in again. It doesn't matter what you thought was going to happen. Just tell us what she's doing already so we can stop her before she does decide to just kill you. Okay, okay, fine. 
Bertha finally said in a panic. I don't know all the details, but I made a deal with her, letting her use the planets in a galaxy of my dimension that was basically totally devoid of life. She made seven different bodies on seven different planets and said that when she was done, she'd need to absorb all of the energy from those planets into the bodies to finish making them. Most of the group then turned to Dresden, many likely having the same question, but without having to ask. Dresden, in an unusually shaky voice, then said, The Seven Archons. You may very well have doomed us all. Just in case anybody forgot, not me, but you know, somebody, can we get a quick refresher on how dangerous these demon things actually are? Like, is we talking Godzilla tough, or snap their fingers and wipe out half of all life tough? It is difficult to say for certain, as they have never taken on physical forms, and may hopefully have some limitations in the bodies they'd manifest into. But it is believed that they themselves were created to construct the multiverse that we live in, though they were never granted access to take on physical forms here themselves. They are resentful towards all sentient life for spending so many millennia living in the worlds they constructed, and now seek to destroy what they've built. And they'll likely enjoy the process. They could very well each have the power to create vast armies of demons or monsters or minions in a matter of moments to follow their commands. So we must know, he said, turning back to Bertha. How close is fear to completing them? I mean, I can't say for sure, but it seems like she's been done with them for a while. She just needed a really powerful device to finish them off. She called it the Multiversal Orb? Plus, she said she needed some being called the Reaper dead before she did it, or that thing would show up and kill her the second she woke them up. Everyone looked to Dresden again, but he seemed like he was processing a lot. Mara tried stepping in once more. I know that sounds really bad, but can't we just go to C-284 again, find those planets and destroy them? If the Archons haven't been awakened yet and those planets don't have life on them anyway, then couldn't we solve this pretty easily? I mean, Dresden did use two of the pieces of the orb to destroy all of Baxel's prison, right? Now we have all four. You are partially correct, but lining the walls of my prison with explosives was a very time-consuming and calculated process. On top of that, Baxel's prison may have been the size of a planet, but it was far more hollow than most. It's much more difficult to destroy a properly dense planet. If we connected all four pieces of the orb, then yes, we could do it easily. But now I am concerned that that is exactly what Fear wants us to do. She has a telepathic link to two of the pieces already, giving her far more power than she should have. If we put the orb back together, it is possible that that gives her access to its entire power, and she could instantaneously awaken the Archons. The only way to guarantee we stop her is by capturing her and keeping the orb shards away from her. Suddenly, Bertha's eyes glazed black, and her mouth peeled back into an unnatural smile. So, you do have all the pieces of the orb then. Thank you for letting us know. Mara knew that voice from the first time she'd learned of the Archons, but before she could say anything, Astra suddenly shrieked and collapsed to the floor, holding her head. Heath dropped to the ground next to her. Astra, what's wrong? No, oh, something's here in our dimension. A lot of somethings. As she said that, black smoke started billowing into the building under the doors. They suddenly burst open, flying off their hinges, revealing darkness and dozens of sets of glowing red eyes. Skinner leapt forward, thrust his hands out, and his symbiote, Scythe, created a goopy barricade to block out whatever was there. But quickly, black claws and blades started tearing through his barrier. Alexis yelled out, Astra, take two people and get your shard to another dimension for safety. Mara, Heath, Kate, you each get another shard from the vault, and all of you... Taryn suddenly interrupted. My overseer runes aren't allowing me to create a portal out of this realm. Sterling spoke next. Our multiverse jumping wristwatches aren't working either. Recovering from her pain, Astra tried to use her orb shard to open a portal. But nothing happened. This one isn't working either. Dresden then said, 
Fear must have used her connection to two of the shards to block us into this realm. I can't imagine she can keep that up forever, but for the time being, it seems we're trapped. Skinner's barricade that suddenly dissolved with green acid spilling through it, and a swarm of flaky-skinned, bony demons charged in. Heath leapt in front of everybody and yelled out, Cyclone Thunderclap! He slammed his palms together and a shockwave sent the demons soaring back out of the building, cleared away some of the smoke, but also tore chunks off the walls and revealed hordes of demons charging through the surrounding forest towards them. At the top of the hill next to the building was a wide open portal with more demons coming through. Floating above it, sitting cross-legged, was Fear herself. Alexis yelled out again, Sterling, take command! Mara, come with me to the vault and get the other shards! We have no idea what Fear can really do now, but if she can trap us in this world, she can probably find a way into the vault too. Mara wanted to protest that she should stay and fight the demons, but she was too scared to go against Alexis's wishes. Luckily, Sterling said, Alexis, you should take Heath instead of Mara. I know we need a tank protecting the other shards, but Mara knows demons better than anyone. We need her here. Alexis nodded. Right, good point. Heath, let's go. Heath had run up to a demon that looked like a massive black land shark and hammered his fist up into its jaw, sending it soaring into the air. I missed the last mission to help the Psy-5, now I'm missing this fight too. Next time we fight an army, I get dibs on the front line. He spun back around and ran with Alexis towards the vault. Then, Mara took his place in the fight. Her eyes lit up purple. There were a lot of creatures to get to on her way, but she was staring straight at fear. Mara burst forward in a streak of purple and exploded through three demons that turned to ash as she tackled through them. She stopped briefly and sprouted a club tail, then slammed it through the head of a demon bear. She darted through another set, erupting them to pieces, then stopped to punch both her fists through the chest of a blade-armed demon, then tore it in half. Off behind her, Sterling was spraying beams of flames at a charging beast, but was watching Mara go and turned to Kayla nearby. Hey BMK, tell me Mara's fighting doesn't look exactly like Feora from that scene in Man of Steel. Kayla's arm was converted into a massive cannon and she was headshotting every demon that came close as she replied, I was literally just thinking that same thing. I seriously hope the security cameras are working because I want to watch her do that again and again. Mara plowed through more and more until she swung her fist at a six-armed demon, not much larger than her, but it was able to catch her fist in four of its own arms, then hammered its next two on top of her head, slamming her into the dirt. This one was clearly a cut above the rest. She flung her tail over her head towards it, but again, the demon caught it. Then it swung her up in the air and hurled her back at the Shark Tank building, sending her smashing through a wall. She rolled across the floor into the building's massive gym and quickly sprung back up. That same demon leapt into the room and grabbed hundred-pound dumbbells in each of its six hands, quickly whipping two of them at Mara at lightning speeds. She was ready to catch them, but two armored figures landed down in front of her and blocked them with their mechanical arms. Benny glanced back at her. I know you probably don't need a hand with this because you have crazy demon powers and whatnot, but me and Champ are trying to do more fun stuff together as a couple, and this seems like a good opportunity. Through the other suit spoke Dr. Champagne. This ain't exactly the first thing I'd think of when I think fun, but Benny, I gotta say, this armor is insanely comfortable. Honestly, I thought it would feel like having a bunch of scrap metal stuck to me or something, but it's like wearing a bleating cloud. You think that's impressive? Wait till you see how many panini makers I built into that thing. The demon sprung forward and swung two more of its fists, holding dumbbells for extra heft. Benny caught one of them in midair, and Champagne tried to catch the other, but was struck in the chest and hurled backwards. Luckily, he was caught by a set of clawed hands. No demon, beast, or beings harms Vasilia Kuznets Panini Friday friends, said Vasilia in her wear jaguar form, dual wielding swords and wearing black and red spiked armor. She roared out and leapt over Mara's head onto the demon, stabbing her two blades through its upper shoulders and biting into its head. Benny flew around it and grabbed two more of its arms from behind. Champagne recovered, ran up, and grabbed its last two arms, so all six were pinned. Mara spun herself around twice, then rocketed her tail straight through the demon's exposed stomach. It let out a final death cry as it burst into a cloud of ash. Mara quickly nodded, thanks for the help, then burst back out through the hole in the wall, darting past more demons towards the top of the hill, where fear was waiting. Mara zipped through the trees, but as she got close, a fist the size of her body slammed into her side and sent her crashing through a dozen trunks, spraying wood debris across the forest. 
She rolled through the dirt to a halt, leaping up to see another demon with a massive upper body running towards her on its fists. Its legs were raised in the air as it moved, and they were smaller, with opposable toes acting as another set of hands. It leapt at her with its feet reaching for her head, but a massive blade swung down and chopped both of its feet off. It shrieked in fury as Kate pulled her blade back. She turned to Mara. Are you going for the kill? Mara, knowing exactly what she meant, just nodded. Then Kate nodded back. Kate swung her blade again at the recovering demon. It darted aside, dodging the strike, then swung its fist towards her. But surprisingly, Kate didn't even try to dodge. The fist went straight through her body, making no contact at all. She smirked. Thanks, Anna. Mara hadn't even noticed that Anna had come up behind Kate and grabbed her, phasing her body so nothing could touch her. The demon pulled back its fist, confused, but then was struck in the head by a barrage of green bolts from above. It looked up. Over here, you grubby monster freak! Jake yelled out as he soared over its head. As the creature was distracted, Anna let go of Kate so she was tangible again, and she swirled her blade around, slicing right through the demon's body, chopping it in half. Jake landed down next to Kate and high-fived Anna. Kate said, You know, I'm actually gonna miss you two when you go off to school soon. Now go back to the others, Mara and I have something to take care of. They both grinned widely at the rare compliment from Kate, then headed back down the hill. Mara and Kate ran the rest of the way up, chopping through a few more demons in their path, then reaching the clearing above. But another member of the team was already there. No more demons were coming through, but the portal back to Fear's world was still open. She floated down closer to the ground a few feet ahead of Dresden. Arava, why ever you think awakening the Archons is a good idea, I promise you it is not. I am sorry that I betrayed you and moved forward with killing the Overseers early, but- Early? She interrupted with a far too eager grin. No, no, Dresden. You did exactly what I wanted. The only little hiccup in my plan, really, is that the Reaper didn't kill you, as I'd hoped. What are you talking about? I thought we were... F I thought we were allies. You wanted the Reaper to kill me? Oh, I'm really quite lucky that you were so gullible. All those times I called you my love, making you feel like I cared so much about you. I thought I was going a bit overboard, to be honest. But you really just ate it up, didn't you? It's sad that you were so desperate for someone to care about you, old man. As much as Mara hated Dresden, she almost felt bad for him hearing those words and saw that his body was slouching from his usual upright stance, as if what she was saying was draining the soul from his body. Fear continued, I let you lose faith in our so-called friendship right at the moment I wanted you and most of the overseers in the multiverse out of the picture. You killed the overseers for me. Less of them than I would have liked, but enough. Then I thought the Reaper would do me a favor and end you as well, so I could jump into your world, take your shards, then come here and steal the others. But I guess it's still working out fine. Black tentacles sprung up from the ground all around fear, and more burst out of her back. Mara was more ready than ever to tear her to pieces, when Alexis's voice echoed through the forest. Where is Heath? With stones covering both arms, Alexis plowed through a demon and ran into the clearing. Where is he? She yelled at fear. The demon queen held out a hand, and a black slimy puddle appeared beneath her. From it suddenly sprung three pieces of the multiversal orb, all put together. As soon as he grabbed the shards, my beautiful Nyctos pulled your friend into a realm of darkness. They're probably back in my world by now. Your friend is likely powerful enough to kill my demon with ease, but it was worth the sacrifice. She tossed the three pieces back through the portal, and a demon on the other side caught them. Now there's just one piece to go. As she said it, she looked up, and Mara followed her gaze. Astra had shifted again into a dragon and was dodging around flying demons, carrying the last shard in her claw. Mara knew they couldn't let Fear get that last piece, and the best way to make sure that didn't happen was to end her. But now that Alexis was on the scene, her heart was pounding at the thought. 
Luckily, Kate ran into action first, sword in one hand and knife in the other. Four tentacles swung up towards her, but she spun in a circle, slicing three of them to pieces with her sword, then leapt onto the fourth, stabbing her knife into it and holding on tight. It swung upwards and she tore her knife back out and used the momentum to leap into the sky, flying towards fear. The tentacles coming out of the Demon Queen rushed up towards her, but Dresden was hurled by Alexis across the clearing into them, tackling them aside just enough to miss Kate. She swung her blade down right for Fear's head. The Demon Queen darted forward in the air to dodge it, but Kate had anticipated it and with her other hand thrust her dagger right towards Fear's neck. Her smaller blade missed its mark, but not by much, stabbing right into Fear's shoulder, and she gritted her teeth angrily as the metal burned her flesh. A swirl of tentacles burst up towards Kate. She raised her sword to block them, but they still hit hard enough to send her tumbling off Fear to the ground, leaving her knife in Fear's arm. Mara realized that she'd been frozen in indecision for too long, but Alexis broke her from her days. Hey, Mara, come on, don't worry. I know you've been a bit out of it lately, and it's probably because Fear's deadline for you to kill the Reaper is coming up, but this is it. A tentacle shot towards Alexis and wrapped around her stony fist. She repelled all the rocks off of her and tore the tentacle apart. She continued, We capture Fear now, take her overseer powers away, and you're never gonna have to kill anyone, got it? And hearing that, Mara couldn't stop herself from bursting out. I do have to! I have to kill Fear! Alexis just stared at her as Mara continued, shaking, I, I know you think killing is always wrong, but we can't risk keeping her alive. She's tortured and killed so many people and can do so much worse if we don't end her now. I, I don't want you to hate me. I love this team so much and you and this group makes me happier than anything else. But even if I have to lose that to kill Fear herself, I still have to do it. Another tentacle shot towards Alexis and without looking at it, she caught it in her stony hand and crushed it. Koshmara, do you really think I'm that unreasonable? I'm friends with Kate and she's killed someone on a mission. I mean, heck, Dresden is even working with us and he's killed hundreds of thousands of people. You've got to have more faith in us. Yes, I do think killing fear is the wrong move here, but I also know that I don't know everything. Mara, remember, we're not your terrible old friends who turned on you because you made a decision they didn't like. Even if we end up disagreeing on a hundred different things, we're never gonna turn our backs on you like they did, I promise. The words were like a shockwave blasting the anxiety right out of Mara's body. Alexis finished with, This is more your mission than it is mine. You call the shots. I'm not going to pretend to like it if you do kill her, but you do whatever you think you've got to do. Mara's eyes watered as the last of her fears melted away. She darted forward and gave Alexis a quick but firm hug. As she stepped back, the tears fizzled into mist as her eyes lit up purple. Thank you, Alexis. Mara then sprang forward with such force that a sonic boom burst behind her. Fear didn't even have time to react when Mara got her demon arm around the queen's torso and slammed her into the dirt, then instantly pounding her other fist into Fear's face, drilling her farther into the ground. Mara grabbed Kate's knife in her tail, raised it, moved her fist out of the way, then thrust it right towards Fear's neck. Three tentacles grabbed Mara's tail, just barely holding it back from stabbing into Fear. I don't sense much fear in you, Koshmara. How far you've come thanks to my curse. Mara kept pushing her blade closer and closer. You don't get any credit for me being happy. The only people who do are me and them. Mara ducked her head back to reveal Sterling, carrying Kate on his back, shooting down towards them with her sword aimed. Fear tried to thrash more tentacles up to stop them, but then saw that all her tendrils were pinned by Alexis, Benny, Champagne, Vasilia, and most of the Sharp gang. Mara rolled aside just in time as Kate's sword drove straight through Fear's stomach, pinning her into the dirt. Fear tried to pull it out, but Sterling and Kate held it down in place. Mara glanced over to Alexis, who gave a slight nod, then looked away, turning to fight off the demons coming back up the hill. Mara spun the knife in her tail and was just about to dash forward and thrust it into Fear's head when a flying demon soared past them all into the portal, carrying the fourth piece of the multiversal orb. Astra had been overwhelmed by flying demons and now the shard thief flew straight towards the demon holding the other three pieces of the orb on the other side of the portal. 
Mara tossed the knife back to Kate so she could finish off Fear, then she leapt through the portal, catching the demon, tearing it in half and grabbing the shard away. She darted towards the other demon to get the other three pieces, but it quickly sunk into a pool of black slime and vanished. Mara whipped back to the portal and just caught a glimpse of Fear, holding Kate's arm back from killing her, then snapping Kate's sword in half to free herself. Before Mara could leap back through to help, Fear waved her hand, and the portal closed. Mara was then stuck standing next to a quiet lake in her home world. She quickly scrambled to try and use her watch to transport her back to the battle, but it wasn't working. Whatever Fear had done to trap them from getting out of that dimension seemed to also not be letting anyone else back in. Mara slammed her fist into the dirt, causing a shockwave that made the whole lake ripple. She wanted nothing more than to get back and help, but more than anything else, she knew that she needed to keep this last piece of the orb safe from demons, and as many as had come through to fight her and her friends, Mara knew there were far more here in her world that would come to try and take it. She knew it wouldn't truly be safe anywhere, but as much as she hated the thought, there was one place that would be safer than anywhere else. Somewhere with a lot of people who were experienced at fighting demons. Mara tapped her watch. Message Sharp Gang. I don't know when you guys will get this, but if this message ever comes through, come to my world, Dimension D667, and find me. I'll send my watch's coordinates. I have the last chart of the orb and I'll be protecting it on an island at the base of the Predator Coalition of Demon Hunters. And with that, Mara ran off to go and for the first time in over a year, see Clayton and her old so-called friends. I hope you all enjoyed part one of this story and get very excited for part two in one week. And if your art wasn't shown in this episode, that probably means it's getting shown in the next one, where I'll be drawing three more Archon demons and one other character that I won't be revealing what exactly it is yet. But huge thank you specifically to the four people that were chosen for this episode. Glitchy Ronin, Uniform Banjo, Pedro Henrique Mores Santos, and Zombie Cat. Also, as usual, if you want the high-resolution art and inks from this episode, those will be up on the Popcraft Studios Patreon by the time you're watching this. And once part two is done, I will be doing a Design Notes podcast episode on there, where I talk about the production of this story, things I had planned, things that cut out, stuff like that. Patreon linked in the description if you want to support me on there. And of course, I will reveal today what the next Community Redraw is for November 2023. It's not going to be a Multiverse Tales story, because I'm going to need a little bit of time to just plan out the next phase of Multiverse Tales. So I'm just going to go with the Popcraft Studios class topic, I want you all to design your own original dragon character. Please submit a design of the dragon, and a possible dragon tamer for that character, but I'm mainly going to be working with the dragons and be turning them into superheroes. Please also submit a little bit of lore with the dragon so I know what its abilities are and where it might live, or whatever you think is relevant. Can't wait to see what you all submit, but besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote from a man named Price Pritchett, who says that your doubts are not a product of accurate thinking, but habitual thinking. The more and more you think doubtful thoughts, the more they start to just feel like a part of your reality, when in reality they're just a negative part of your mind convincing you that you can't achieve a thing that you definitely can achieve if you just believe in the possibility and put work behind getting to that thing. I hope that's inspiring, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday. Goodbye!